Shabbat Shalom, friends and family. I'm your sister, Pastor T. Marie, and I want to welcome you to our Sabbath service today. I also want to bring your attention to our website. There's so much going on, and I truly do not wish for you to miss anything that we have going on. So if you are interested in donating to the ministry, volunteering with us feeding the homeless, pouring into the ministry so that we can actually disperse out funds to our international ministries, this is where you will be able to do as such. We have Bible study every second and fourth Wednesday of every month. And that is taught by all of our pastors sporadically. And that is where we will be able to take the word of God, look at it, dissect it, see what the word of God is truly saying to us and how we can apply that word of God to ourselves and pray for us to receive that word that it will change our lives forever. So if you want to definitely join us for Bible study, we would love to see you there. Your presence is appreciated. And we want you to definitely find new ways by teachers with different styles on expounding on the word of God. And you can do that by going to our website. And that's tizhope.org. T-I-Z-H-O-P-E dot O. R-G. Um, we have a fabulous marriage ministry. I must say, me being a single woman, find that there is levels of gems, high levels of knowledge, insight for us to just utilize as married couples and single people. You know, sometimes we must be postured for that very thing that we desire. So if you desire marriage, I want to invite you guys out to our marriage ministry uh, events, and you can see those on our websites as well. So um, we have so much going on virtually, in person, and we want for you to be a part of that. We are on almost every platform there is, and there is no need for you not to have access to hope. Because here at Coratis Hope Ministries, we believe in one God, one people, and one faith. And that's the word. Faith in the word of God. Faith in the ability of God. Faith in knowing that God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask and or think. And you don't have to take my word for it. I want you to take the word for it. The word of God. It's good all by itself. So today, we are going to be talking about one of our brothers. Yes, one of our brothers in Christ. We are going to be talking about the Apostle Peter. And before we even go into this teaching, guys, it is imperative that we submit our hearts and minds to God so that he can flow through this teaching. And as we pray, believe that what we're praying for will happen. If you are able to bow your heads with me, please do as such. Father God, we come to you this morning right now in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you, God, thanking you for waking us up this morning, thanking you for not uh, being upset with us and our shortcomings, God. We thank you for the grace and the mercy that you just have for our lives, Father. We thank you that you didn't count it robbery for us to see it to this day. Father, we thank you for every limb that's working. Father, we thank you for our ability to see, hear, and to think clearly, Father. I lift up those, Father, that are just battling right now, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Father God, I ask right now, 
now that you be the healer that I know you to be. Father, as we expound on your word of God, we ask, Father, that you open our ear gates, that what it is that does save the spirit penetrate not only our ears, but our heart. You said in your word, God, that faith comes by hearing, and that's hearing your word. Let your word come forth, Father God, and do the work in us that it is intended to do for reproof and correction. Have your way with us today, great God that you are. Your word is already blessed, and we thank you that we have access to a word, Father God, that not only speaks to our past, it speaks to our present, and it speaks to our future. Father, we thank you for a word that's so old, yet so relevant and prevalent in our lives today, Father God. We thank you that you are a trustworthy God. We thank you that we can cast all of our cares upon you. We thank you that you have yet to fail us. Father God, you may not be a God that travels on our time, but we thank you for always being on time. We bless you. In Yahshua's name, we come to you. Amen. Amen, people of God. Amen, people of God. So I want to talk today about our brother, Peter. And I want to give you a little bit of context, a little bit of background about our brother, because I feel like some of us can relate to Peter. You know, um, there's different areas in our lives where Peter may have done some things that we could all so relate to. But um, Peter is one of Christ's disciples. He was one of the first uh, disciples that uh, Jesus had called into his ministry. And Peter was actually walking with John the Baptist also. So when Jesus comes and he calls Peter, he's fishing. They were throwing their nets over and they weren't catching anything, anything at all. And Jesus told them to do it again. And when they flung that net over, they caught a multitude of fish. And Christ tells them, follow me, follow me. So we can see that Peter and his brother Andrew, they were brothers. Jesus called the both of them. They were working. And to be a fisherman in that time, you had to be strong. They had to weather all kinds of storms because fishing was their means of income. And if you take the time out to just see what it is like for the life of a fisherman, it is beyond my own personal thoughts. We seem to think that fishing is just sitting on the boat and the waters are smooth and you just throw your net out there or throw your uh, hook out there and you just catch some and it just comes easy. No, sometimes they have to go into the deepest of waters. They have to travel in storms. So they have to be physically equipped, mentally equipped to handle this type of job. So Jesus tells Peter to follow him. And what I love about Peter, that even though he already had a career in place, he already had a job, he already had a means of income, he dropped everything that he had and he followed Christ. And that is one of the greatest things that we can do as individuals is follow Christ. But Peter also said something that I find to be extremely uh, profound in life. Because when we are called by Christ, most of the time, we do not feel like we are worthy. So in Luke 5, 6 and 8, when Jesus called him, he bows down to, he bows down to Christ. And he says, I am ashamed of my sinfulness in the presence. He was ashamed because of the lifestyle that we was living. And no, it doesn't give any particular context about the things that he was doing. But we see in Peter's character through reading the Gospels that Peter was a bold man. We seen that Peter, well, he, he cut off the ear of the one of the servants that came when they tried to take Jesus captive before he was crucified. This is also the same Peter that denied Jesus three times. How many times? 
Have we been gung-ho for Christ and we wanted to do the best and we didn't let anything stop us or anything get in our way? And then there are times in our life where Christ is giving us direction and directives and we don't yield to it. We deny it. We go sometimes into our own thinking. We go to into our own thoughts and, and what we feel about a matter. So, so I like that Peter shows us the human side of being a disciple. But today, I want to read from you out of the book of Luke. This is going to be the 22nd chapter, and this is the 31st verse on the verse. All right? So we know, um, particular chapter, Jesus has broken bread with his disciples. He has identified that he's going to be betrayed by one of his disciples. And then he predicts his Peter's denial. You know, some people love me so much and might never fathom we deny we love someone that we walk with, someone that we believe in, but it happens. And this is where Christ calls it out with our brother Peter. Let us glean from the word of God. Verse 31, Luke 22, verse 31. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation if you want to be on a court with today. And God Simon, Simon, sin has asked to sift each of you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have it and turn to me again, mm, strengthen your brother. Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and even to die with you. But Jesus says, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow, you will have denied three times that you even know me. No. Then Jesus asked them, when you do not have me traveling back for an extra pair of sandals. Did you need me? No, they replied. And the word of God is already blessed. So here we have this moment where Jesus is amongst his disciples and he picks out his brother and he says, me choosing to sift you as we eat. Why is that profound? It's profound because Christ had already told him the plans of the enemy. Woo. So it wouldn't have become a shocker when it happened. So Christ tells Peter, the enemy is coming to sift you like But I have pleaded and prayed for you. Isn't that something? In the word of God that we are living in, and the word of God we believe in this Bible, we are called to walk like Christ. So he foreseen him being the son of God. I'm pretty sure he had the knowledge that this was going to be because he spoke it as so. He promised to Peter that you are going to be tempted by the enemy because he wants to sift you. I have prayed. This is a posture. This is a posture we should take. When we see one of our brothers falling off, when we see one of our sisters falling off, when we see these things. But he also says this. I pray that your faith should not fail. This is an indicator that Christ is telling Peter, your faith is going to be put to the head. Going forward. So when you have repented and turned to me again, do you see this? He's telling him the enemy is going to save you as weak. I'm praying for your faith because guess what? You are going to turn 
away from me. You are going to repent, but you are going to turn back to me. And not only are you going to turn back to me, you are going to be true brothers. Jesus Christ changed Simon's name to Peter. That means work. He's the foundation. So Peter let him know, me knowing that you are the rock of the matter, the enemy is going to come to try to sift you as wheat. I'm praying that you do not fail because I know during the sifting process, your faith is going to be tested. And guess what? Even when your faith is in the process of being tested, you are going to turn away from me, but you are going to repent. I know this to be true. So when that does happen, you come back and you strengthen your brothers. That one verse is so powerful because Christ gave the plan of the enemy. He prophesied what Peter was going to do while he was being sifted as wheat. But he also to let him know, you're going to turn back around to me. And when you do turn back around to me, strengthen your brothers. In this particular scripture, Christ is telling Peter, you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. As we read further on in the text, truly encourage you to read the gospels for yourself. Jesus calls Peter after he's resurrected and he questions him. Do you take care of my sheep? Ask him again. Do you love me? Then take care of my sheep. He asked him again. Read times Christ gave him opportunities to repent and to express his love for him because he denied him previously and he's being challenged to prove that he loves him. But Jesus prayed for him. Can you imagine the son of God standing in prayer for you? He is. One of the things I learned about the word of God is God knows us. God knew Peter. God knew me. God knows you. And he knew that the enemy is going to try to come and distract you and to distract you and to derail you and to take you off your post and to expose the holes in your arm, to give warfare to your mind, to bring storms on the outside of your life and to bring storms in your relationship with your children, with your spouse, on your job. His job is to sift you as wheat, to pull you or uproot you from the power of being in the presence of God. Come on, somebody. When the enemy is in that process of sifting you, and let me tell you when the, an, an, an indication when the enemy has done his job properly, the more he's giving you problems, the more that he's sifting you, the less you praying, the less you are praising, the less you are spending time with God. That is the enemy being successful at sifting you because his job is to draw you from God, draw you from your praise, draw you from your prayer life, draw you from the presence of God because it's in the presence of God where you are restored. It's in the presence of God where you are encouraged. It's in the presence of God where you are rejected. 
rejuvenated. It is in the presence of God where you can have the victory over a matter where you can be honest with God, where you can lay your burdens down, where God can care for you, where God can cradle you, where God can comfort you in the midst of your storm so that we know that if the enemy is going to sift his disciples like we, what do you think that he's going to do to you as a disciple of Jesus Christ? He's going to try to sift you. Ah, but Jesus prayed. Whew. In our story, Jesus sacrificed <laughs> that his faith Faith did not fail him. So one indicator that, that when the enemy is sifting you as wheat, your faith begins to fail. I hope I'm making some sense today. When you sense that your faith is beginning to fail you, the sifting process, the enemy is sifting and it's working. I pray for your strength. I pray for your faith. And our posture, just as Christ walked this earth, we should be postured to pray for our brothers and sisters when you can see that they may be under attack or may go under attack or fighting something. There is power in praying for one another. Because even though Peter turned away from God, he turned back. He turned back. And that is my encouragement to you today. The enemy may have sifted you. You may have given up on God. You may have began to lean into your own understanding. You may have thought your problems was bigger than the promises of God. You may have looked at your circumstances and thought you would never get out of this. But I am here to declare to you today that somebody's praying for you. If, if not anybody's praying for you, Christ is speaking on your behalf. Your Holy Spirit will groan to God. Your Holy Spirit can speak utterance up to the Father that may not even be known in language, but just sound. And God hears your tears and God is all knowing and he knows where you at. He knows where you're going. He knows what you've been through. Somebody has their eye on you. Somebody sees you. Somebody is ready. God is ready. Christ is ready. The Holy Spirit is ready to give you what you need. But it's in your faith whew, that all things are made possible because the word of God tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because those that come to him must believe. You have to believe. You have to have the faith. Because if your faith fails you, your armor gets weakened. The enemy can get to you easier. And it will draw you away from God. So my prayer today is that your faith fail you not. My prayer is that your faith be increased beyond the size of a mustard seed. And when we look at a mustard seed, it's by far one of the smallest seeds of all of the seeds. But God is only requiring us to have that much. But I dare for you to increase your faith beyond the size of a mustard seed and not tell God how big your problems are, but begin to tell your problems how big your God is. When you get to that place where you said, oh God, I know what you said. I believe what you said. I stand on what you said. I will walk in what you said. See, see, we, we come into a different place when you rely on God and have that belief system and that faith, because the closer you draw to God, the enemy is going to attempt to take you from his presence because in the presence of God, there is freedom and there is liberty. I can honestly admit I've never went to God feeling bad and went to him in honest prayer, not just babbling on, not just hitting a
overruling God. But being honest with God and in the presence of God, there is not one time in my life that I've been in the presence of God and I felt the same way I walked in. I did not. I did not. This is time for us to remain in the presence of God. This time of today, wars are raging. Bad is being called good. Good is being called bad. Women are men. Men are women. When we're living in this Babylonian time, it's imperative that we stay in the presence of God. Today, I wanna give you the opportunity, the opportunity to say, you know what God, I may have denied what you said. God, I may not have lived the way that you even see me fit for me to live. I've done some things. I have some that, some that, some that, and some this is. But God, today, I, I know those things are the things that you died for. And it's in you that I am free from those things. It is in you where I can come into the presence of God washed and blameless. Because you have a counselor, a wonderful counselor, and a prince of peace that is ready to operate on your behalf. But it's gonna take your belief. It's gonna take your faith. And guess what? Honestly, as a woman of God, a leader in ministry, my faith has been put to the test. My, I've walked in and leaned into my own understanding at times. My favorite, my life verse is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And that's to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and to lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's my life verse because those were the challenges that I faced and are facing. Because the Sometimes our situations brings out the carnality in us. When sometimes, most times than not, we have to begin to look at a matter from a spiritual standpoint. I can't get angry about what's happening with people on my job and how they treat me. Because the word of God tells me that my battle isn't even against people. My battle isn't against flesh and blood, but principalities, rulers that sit in high places. And the more I understood that, I no longer had a resentment towards people. I began to see the spirits that they're battling with. And guess what? The Lord gave me a heart of sympathy and empathy. And he postured me to simply pray for those who work against me. That was the level of maturity that I needed. But don't think for one second, even though I'm healed in that area, oh, the residue still shows itself. Because sometimes when we get piles on and piles on and piles on, when that sifting, starts happening. If the enemy can't get you on your job, he'll get you with your kids. He'll get you with your spouse. He'll get you with your health. He'll get you with your mind. He'll get you. He, he, he will try everything. Understand that the enemy literally has staff meetings on how to discourage you. You. Because he knew if you really stood on your faith, he had no power. If you truly know that you have the victory over the enemy. He said the weapon will be formed, but it shall not prosper. He's going to attack, but we already know we got the game plan. We've been prophesied that it will not prosper. 
And I pray that that helps you begin to go through situations and maneuver through these hard things with a different mindset. I don't care where you are in the world. I've never seen a storm in the sky last forever. And that's how it is with the troubles that we endure. They don't last forever. So today, I want to give you an opportunity if you are not saved, to your life to God. And if you want to repeat after me, Father God, I come to you, a sinner, looking to be saved by your grace. For I believe that Christ is your son and he died for my sins and he rose on the third day. Today, I give you my life in exchange for the Holy Spirit to dwell in me richly, creating me a clean heart, a renewed mind, and a right spirit that my name may be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Forgive me for my sins. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. If you are finding yourself going through some things, some hardships where you need someone to talk to, go to our website, tishope.org, T-I-Z-H-O-P-E dot O-R-G. And this is where you can be connected to ministers who are certified Christian counselors. And we can help you sort your things out in a godly way. We love you.